Alright, so I'm getting ready to put the super coolant in, and of course, there is no radiator cap. It is on the overflow. So you can pour it into the overflow, but it says it'll take four to five uh, heating and cooling cycles because it'll expand and contract and pull fluid back, push some more into the overflow, pull it back, push it in, and eventually it'll mix. But I don't want to wait. Um, so I took the plastic cover off. Just to see, I thought maybe there still would have been a cap you can get to. I was wrong. So what I'm gonna do is take this line off right here. And then down here, if you have a factory air box, it's probably not gonna be near as easy. All right, so I assume you can see that this plastic post right here with this plastic wing nut out here. You can drain some coolant right there so you can pour straight into the radiator. Now I gotta admit, I'm not the best at this rule because you're not supposed to get under a car without a jack stand, and I'm guilty of it, but I try not to. <laughs> thing that sucks is there's no little nipple on that thing to connect a hose to. It's basically just put a pan down and hope you catch most of it. I would recommend just using the overflow method if you have a car that does not have a radiator cap. It's just going to be much simpler. Now that I think of it, with the cap being on the overflow, that's constantly under pressure anyways. So I'm wondering if this new system is more like the one on my BMW than in my old Honda, where if I put it in that reservoir, it's actually the same as adding it to the uh, radiator, which I'm going to look into before I try to reach my big hand in that small spot and crack that valve. All right, chalk one up in the idiot column for me. I didn't need to pull anything apart. Uh, the fact that the cap is on that <laughs> surge tank, not overflow, surge tank, and the line runs just right into the radiator, I'm pretty sure the coolant in that is constantly in the system. All right, so I got to take that much out. I'm going to use my brake uh, vacuum bleeder deal, and I'll fill this, empty it into the my fancy recovery tank right there. And let's see, 16 ounces. This holds four, so I'll have to empty four of these into my recovery system. Last one. And it does say compatible with all types and all colors of antifreeze. see what the big deal is. I wouldn't like that stuff off the driveway. <laughs> Apparently I never shut it off last night. It's been 13 hours and 59 minutes since I first started time in this car. Start. Start. And then last night I waited a minute to go and drive easy. Obviously the uh, thermostat is not open, so not everything's mixing right now. So the test should be identical just about right now. However, uh, once the thermostat opens, the super coolant should start getting mixed in with the system. <clears throat> and uh, then there's a chance to see the result. Two minutes and 10 seconds in, we're at 109. I do have uh, climate control on <clears throat> the same temperature as I did yesterday, just on auto. So it won't come on until the same temperature and it should pull the same amount of heat from the engine out of the coolant as it did yesterday because it's the same basic same temperature outside. And the same thing, the car's been sitting for hours so there's no residual heat anywhere in the car or the block or anything. Three minutes and 15, we're at 123. I'm not on the ball this time on the temperature per minute deal. I know at 135 or so, you get heat in the car so well before that the thermostat's letting stuff flow so probably right now it's mixing because now we're at 132 four 
four minutes and eight seconds. <laughs> oh, 134. Oh my God, come on, dude. At least do the speed limit of 25. Okay, so we're at seven minutes and 20 seconds, and we just hit 161. That is definitely worse than yesterday as far as warming up. We just hit 165 in eight minutes. So I just hit 170 at eight minutes and 42 seconds. All right, so I think what happened there is a case that it did warm up faster. Then the reason it took so much longer to hit 160 and 170 is because now you're at the upper end of the extremes to where now the car is just cooling itself off a lot better. It's getting all that heat to the radiator and out to the air better than it did before. The other thing is you gotta remember last night uh, when I got into town and actually said 48 on my dash and my intake temps were also 48 on both of them. This time it says 42 and it said 44 on both of them. So I'm at a four to six degree disadvantage because it's colder out so it would take longer to warm up plus as soon as the air across the radiator is colder it should be taking more heat out of the coolant and cause it to run cooler. That is that reason, I believe. So, there you have it. Uh, I'll post the results in a second. Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe. Have a nice day. See you later. And yeah, before you say it, I know the thermostat ultimately dictates how cool the car is going to be able to run. <clears throat> because if you get below the threshold, it's just going to stay closed. And you're not going to just keep dropping and dropping and dropping in temps no matter how good your cooling system is.